Just a quick update. This is a uh, thanks to Thomas Moen from years ago. He, uh, I think we traded. He traded me some uh, MCM Electronics 21s uh, that used um, eight stacks of ferrite. They weren't even this tall. It's probably like maybe two inches tall. And um, I went ahead and uh, had this. Uh, I had the bolt hole pattern added uh, the, for M6 five inch. Uh, I'm going to probably put a TI frame on this and probably make it Neo. Um, the setup for these pancake motors uh, that were invented by, well, I don't know. I think the pancake motor was invented later, probably in the 70s. Uh, I remember seeing even like old Sansui motors with a, with a U uh, because um, of the way they magnetized magnets back then. Uh, since then, they've made much bigger magnetizers so they can use much different magnets so but i'll take this apart real quick this originally just had a single hole in the back i had the boys add uh, four more uh, and then uh, i had to mill out the center part so to make good metal to metal contact even though it's um you really only have to get it in close proximity uh for it to be effective but i don't know it's the, that's I, that's the part of the ocd i still you know i still want to keep <laughs> i guess so, but I want to show you this, the back, I had just spray painted them black and then uh, they put them on the surface grinder and it ended up looking really cool. So that's also what's known as uh, diamond cutting. You sometimes you'll see that on uh, subwoofer frames, uh, but uh, it's, just, it's just a diamond blade that cuts it. So I guess it's called diamond cutting, whatever. But um, I think that was it. Uh, oh, I, I had a an idea for a, um, a Neo um, 7 to 10K motor, and nobody wanted it. Um, I can get them for about 600 shipped. Uh, my design with um, a heat shield around here that would be liquid cooled. Uh, I know Scott at Phi had done, I think it was the N2 or the N3. He does a aluminum heat shield to protect the Neo from the outside. If you get Neo up around 350, 400 degrees, uh, it starts to, that's the curry point. So it starts to lose its charge and then that can cause problems and cause it to burn. And then you got to send the motor back in to get recharged and all that kind of stuff. So um, in a really high powered motor like this, you really want some sort of heat shield, which is what, like I said, Scott did. Um, but I wanted to go the extra step of uh, having, basically it's like a, like a coil, but it would be like quarter inch, uh, copper tubing and uh, it would go around and then uh, you'd have uh, an inlet on the bottom or an outlet on the bottom and then um, and then underneath the top plate would be the other side and you just put quick disconnects and and then use like a little Arduino or a Raspberry Pi board to monitor temperature and um, you know accelerate or slow down the flow of the the fluid and the heat exchanger you can have uh, se uh, temperature sensors on the um, probably have one like right there uh, to monitor the inside of the coil and then another one on the outside of the heat shield to, to see the difference. So, but um, no, people turned down my Neo idea and they, they were like, uh, we want to see ceramic. So they wanted 150 pound ceramic motors, which to me is dumb because you can't even lift the fucking subwoofer into the box, right? Especially if you do like a horizontal mount um, and then, you know, you hit a small bump and it just breaks the frame. So there's not even frames, but it's whatever you the market is willing to bear is really what is, I, and I usually just give really good, I, you know, really good uh, deals on high performance stuff like that. I also sell little stuff like this. So some of you may recognize this. This is, uh, of course it's made in China, but um, uh, this barcode, that's the Rockford barcode. So. Technically, this is a Rockford woofer, right? Now, when I say that, what I really am talking about is the Rockford Corporation. Rockford Corporation owns uh, several brands. Uh, one of them is Hafler. One of them is Lightning Audio. Both of those brands are shelved. They also own the Rockford Fosgate brand. So, but the, the, the parent company is called Rockford Corp. And so when I'm gonna sell these, even though these are, they were, these were originally sold under the Lightning Audio brand, I've kind of saturated my market. So. I'm gonna try them selling them as Rockford subs, right? Which is technically correct, but 
Some people may feel misled. Either way, it's still very affordable and it's cheaper than what you can buy at Eva, you know, even like a P1. Uh, but these are equal to like a P2. In fact, Rockford even used the um, same nomenclature. They called this one a P2, but it was like under the Lightning brand. So, but uh, there you go. See, and then you just put a surplus cap on there and uh, now it's worth $50. So, and even that's a bargain. So I think way back, Rockford used to sell them uh, one for 99 and then they would give you one free. So which was $50 each, but you cannot find those deals anymore. Like P1s go for like a hundred dollars. It's crazy. Uh, even though manufacturing costs on these have actually gone down, probably this one you could probably get for $5, you know, maybe, maybe nine or 10, uh, especially cause it's got the fancy Chrome uh, frame on it. So, but um Let's see what else. I don't know. I'll have some more stuff for you guys this weekend. I got to do a lot of short videos because uh, there's so much information. Uh, too much information. You like that? SSL. Uh, Tony DeMore, DeMore Engineering. Uh, remember, Tony, um, I don't know if he got his start, but it used to be on his LinkedIn profile. Tony used to engineer for Boss, Boss Group. Boss Group owns uh, the SSL brand, they own Planet Audio, they own Audio Bank. Um, uh, like and 20 other brands that you probably never heard of, um, which I think is, you know, the sheer volume that that company does is just amazing. And, um, the consistency that they do, you know, some, I can hear people now go, it's consistently junk. Well, here's the problem with, with that. And I, and I really don't like the way that, uh, Derek Williston over at, uh, Big D Wiz sort of wags his finger at these companies because, at the end of the day, you have to sell the amplifier. Otherwise, you're just it's a, it's a it's a it's a dust collector, right? If the amp's not being used, it's a dust collector. So you have to sell it. You have to find a home for it. So this amplifier says that it uh, it just says 1200 watt. It doesn't tell you that the amplifier does that. It just says 1200 watt, and it, of course, it's assumed that this amp does 1200 watts. That's the assumption. You got to understand that there are other companies, and this is sort of the genie out of the bottle. The problem is, is once one company starts to do it, uh, another company starts to do it. And back in the day, it used to be a peak to peak rating. So you would divide this by four and that would give you the real rating. So, and actually that's the case in this, in this case. So this one does about 300 Watts, probably solid. I'd love to see benchmarks on it. The, um, I don't know if this was the original frame. I got this refurbished. So I got them refurbished. I flip them for 65 bucks, which is still cheaper than refurbished ones online, which usually go for about $89. So I feel good about selling it. I make a small profit um, and uh, we give a three-year warranty on it, um, which is great. You can't find that anywhere else. And that's what I always try to do is I always try to offer something that's as good or better than uh, competing deals. But I always give you like freebies, like the, the warranty or just more dollar for the, or more bang for the buck. So, but an easy way to tell what an amplifier does is look at the fuse. So, and you do some quick math, uh, was it current times voltage equals power. So um, this one is a 35 amp fuse. So if you put a zero on, it does about, um, cause you're multiplying by 10 volts instead of 12 or 14 volts. So, you know, it does probably a pretty good solid 300 to 350 Watts. And it's a, it's a standard uh, class AB two channel. So it's, it's a uh, two ohm per channel stable. We pair it up um, with some uh, really affordable subs that are actually were made for home audio. Uh, each one is eight ohms, but when you wire them in parallel, you get four ohms and then you bridge it, boom. It works great. We've sold lots of packages like this. Um, this is actually a locally sourced solid MDF box. The box alone is probably worth that, but um, Everybody loves it and we do this package for like 150 bucks. So um, not everything is that, okay? So, and I gotta pay bills too. I'm actually trapped in this fucking property and there's not much I can do except maybe sell a screenplay so I can move. But um, uh, I gotta pay bills. So you guys are, that are audio snobs, uh, shut the fuck up. Uh, I gotta pay bills. So if you wanna be snobby and spend too much money, I'll take your money, right? I got deals for you. For everybody else that's poor, like me, this works just fine. Um, some people ask me what's in my truck or my vehicle. 
nothing. I'm not allowed to change the stereo because I had our last car apart for 10 years, adding Dynamat and doing all this stuff and flipping the audio in it. So uh, we bought a 2014 Camry hybrid and the system that comes with it is great. It's not even like an upgraded like Bose or whatever system. It's not that, it's, just, it's the one that Toyota uses and the 6x9s use Neo motors and wizard cones and it sounds great. I don't need thundering huge amounts of bass. Um, some people do, but you'll grow out of that. Mostly that has to do with uh, hormones. Uh, that's also another reason why a lot of guys were like, oh, I love old school woofers. They're more efficient. You know, well, you also remember bass differently because your body was different. You're, at that point, you're, you're in your teenage years and early 20s, dude, you got like a boner all the time. And, and you really just got to get that poison out. And, uh, and that, you know, that's, that's according to nature, that's midlife, right? Cause people usually only lived about 30 years old, 30, maybe 40 years old. Uh, so that was like breeding heyday. And at that time you're super sensitive to vibration and things like that. Um, and you remember the bass differently. And, and especially cause it's nostalgic. Nostalgia is a powerful drug. Um, and you know, like, Oh, I remember that what's really a good reminder of nostalgia and how, how, how much it skews your vision is to, uh, run into an old lover, run into an old girlfriend or whatever. And, uh, you talk to him and you go, Oh yeah, I remember this psycho. I gotta go. And so that, that's what that is. So these guys that collect these amps, um, sell them, sell them to these crazy people that, that collect amplifiers and they bring them home and they test them and they, show brag pictures, and then they put it in a closet until they die. And then their spouse has to sell that stuff. And then you can buy it back again and, and flip it again. Do not be that guy. Do not be the dummy at the bottom of the Ponzi scheme that is audio. <coughs> be at the top. And that's what I do for people is I, um, I give them a deal like this. We sell this for 150 bucks. And then uh, especially in outlying areas, um, I'm in Mesa, Mesa, Arizona, which is in Maricopa County in the surrounding areas. There's like, like if you, even if you just go South 20 minutes, you get run into Casa Grande. I think there's only like one shop there. And I think they even shut down the Best Buy, but, um, you can take this setup and sell it there for at least 200 to 350. Um, and it's still cheaper than the shop that's there. So I have lots of resellers that live on outside of Maricopa County or even on the fringes. They come in uh, each week, they buy like a thousand dollars worth of stuff and then they go resell it and install it um, at their house. And that's what I, that's really the purpose of robot. That's really what I want to do. One of the things I wanted to also talk about was the church. So my church helps support me uh, in this project. And one of the things that we want to do to help enable people um, to, to be independent and to live better lives is we want to help you make a thousand dollars cash at home so that you can stay home with your family. If you could stay home with your family, that's, that, and really, if you think about it, that's why we all get jobs in the first place, right? Is so we can spend time with our family. But it, what if you can do that at home? So first of all, you're at home. And then second of all, if you can make enough to pay your bills and have some extra time and do some good things, you're, you're good. That, and that's the whole point. So, but if you, if you look at the way that society is structured and the way that companies sell stuff and the way that, you know, everything, everything seems... Uh, against you and, and sort of makes you get into that grind of a commute and to even just have a commute, you need to have a car. And if you have a car, then you're talking about maintenance and, uh, insurance and fuel and all that stuff. And then, um, you spend an hour in the car on the freeway, uh, behind a bunch of other dummies that couldn't figure it out. So believe me, I was, I used to be that dummy. Uh, but I got sick and tired of that. And then that's when in 2003, I saw my opportunity. Oh, and I grabbed it. I went balls deep on that motherfucker. And then even when I got it and, uh, I got it, my last job in the Bay area, it paid all my credit cards off. I came home. Then I spent another 12 grand that year buying up other stuff that people had bought at the auction and then didn't know what they were doing or didn't know what they had. And uh, a lot of them just wanted to trade. And so, because I already had been as a installer type person, uh, for, you know, probably 10 years at that point. I was able to give them what they wanted and uh, solve their problems. So lemons into lemonade, guys. Um, do flips, flip your way to a better life. Uh, I'll, I'll keep coming back up with uh, these short videos. This one's already at 15. So love you. Talk to you later. Underground.